It is actually really, really nice out here. We do not have the Kansas sticker on this map, and I know we've been here before. Ah, oh, very cool. I'm so glad that was fixed. We are in Wakini, Kansas, the home of the $70 pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's our second morning, I think, here in, uh, what was it called? Wellsville, Wellington, Wellington, Kansas. Um, and amazingly, it's only 78 degrees this morning. It is actually really, really nice out here, guys. I can, there's people out here like walking dogs and playing with their kids and stuff. And it's only like 9 a.m. So it's like, it's amazing how just the temperature being different and actually feeling good outside makes this a completely different experience being at this park. I mean, we absolutely love the KOA parks and we try to choose them over anything else. But man, when you're like holed up in the RV with all the windows closed and everything because it's so hot and you're just trying to stay cool, it just kills the experience. You want to be able to be out here, you know, see other people having fun camping and everything, maybe have a campfire, make some s'mores. And in the summer, that's difficult, especially when it's 105 degrees. But even when it's too hot to have a fire, it would be nice to be able to sit around out here, like at the table or on the swing over here, even to make some burgers on this grill right here. And that's one thing that I really hope by the end of this fall tour, that we're into some cooler weather, that we can have some fires and just make some hot dogs and sit around. Just makes me think of when we were at the KOA in Oregon and we were sitting around the fire with hoodies on, making s'mores. Although if my memory serves me correctly, we didn't make any kind of hot dogs or anything, we actually ordered a pizza. <laughs> While I'm out here this morning though, I needed to take a look at all our stickers here and see if we had a Kansas sticker on here. Because for some reason, we do not have the Kansas sticker on this map, and I know we've been here before. It could be that we were just passing through, because our general rule is that we have to stay the night in that specific state in order to put a sticker on. So maybe we just did not spend the night before, but we've been here for a few nights now, so at least we've earned our sticker now. We also have another brand new sticker map to put on, but this one's a little bit bigger than the one we're gonna be putting on. So I need to figure out how we're either going to take that off or cover it up with white contact paper or something. This one is just so faded that we wanted to put a new one on here and really brighten it up. And honestly, I kind of think that we cover that one up and put the new one over here. What you cooking up, love? Oh, some of these biscuit sandwiches. <laughs> that was the best bite ever. <laughs> Get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so here's our new sticker map right here. And here's our big stickers that go on the RV on the road map. Yep, there it is. Kansas right there. For some reason we never put that on, but we'll put it on today. We also have Hawaii, North Dakota, Colorado, Montana, and Alaska. And we've been to North Dakota, so why is that one not on there either? So this is the new piece that I'm hoping I needed to get the lights working on the tow dolly here. You can see how it has rounded holes. This kind of a connector on the back, rounded holes on the front. So I had to special order that from Amazon and I had to order it two days before we got to this park so that it would show up here just about the time that we were. So here's the old one and you can kind of see where it's a little bit like corroded and it sat out in the weather. I didn't even think to cover it up while it was out in the weather for a year. Well, I got the new one in and I was just about to say I don't see any other damage to the wires, but then I noticed this under here where this is frayed and this appears to be a broken wire right there. So probably gonna have to repair that, but it'll probably be easy because all I have to do is shave those wires, twist them together and use some electrician's tape. And I don't have a stripper or electrician's tape, but this stuff will do. Yep, there it is. I wish I would have just noticed that before. I would have fixed it at home, but this rubs on the ground. It gets pinched in here 
and among these chains and everything and it has just cut that wire so I gotta fix that there's one end there's the other end now we'll just hook them together all right there we go I fixed it taped it all together and then I reinforced this entire line with duct tape just because that rubber stuff was getting torn all over. I made sure that there weren't any other wires that were damaged in there. So we should be good to go. Okay, Marion's in there, gonna turn it on. We're gonna check the brakes, the turn signals. Praying to God this works. Yes, there we go, guys. Brakes work. We got the lights on on the tow dolly as well as the back of the RV here. Okay, we got the turn signals going, guys. Yes, I am a happy boy. Ah, oh, very cool. I'm so glad that was fixed. I probably could have even fixed that without ordering the new part, but at least we have a new part. In fact, I ordered two just to have some extras. That is one habit that I've made. Whenever anything goes wrong and I have to order new parts, I order two of them so I have them in stock in case it ever happens again. Oh wow, this is the cheapest we've paid for gas out here on the road this trip. 311 per gallon, 312 actually. And loves number two is 349 per gallon. And that quick we are in Wakini, Kansas. Wakini. The home of the $70 pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the craziest thing. So she's over here munching on her uh, little chicken wings or whatever they're called. We ordered from Pizza Hut when we got here. We got um, <laughs> two orders of breadsticks, if I can get this open. Two orders of those breadsticks. We got a pizza that has pepperoni, sausage, and mushrooms on it. That's a large pizza. And was there something else, babe? Oh, the two liter of pop. And yeah, I'm not even kidding. With I gave the girl a $10 tip, and it was a total of $72 for this pizza. I think that's the most expensive pizza I've ever bought in my life. <laughs> but yeah, we're here at Wakini KOA Journey in uh, Kansas still. We're just about two hours from the border of Colorado. And we're gonna be here for two nights tonight and tomorrow night. Um, there are no Spirit Halloween stores in this area at all, but we're gonna run out tomorrow because we have a couple of other things on our list that we need to get. Um, we're glad that the temperature is down now. I mean, it's, babe, what was it? It's still in the 90s today? 80s. It's, it's in the 80s, like the high 80s. Um, but we're so glad that we are out of that 105 degree weather that we've been in for about four, maybe five days now. That was absolutely insane. So we we're out here trying to get some shots of like the moon up here and the sunset down here. And I keep talking every time she tries to make a little short or something, but let me try to zoom in here. It actually looks pretty cool with the traffic coming up over there. Anyways, yeah, so that's what we're doing. I'm standing here in soaking wet shorts because I, I couldn't stand but to get in the pool over there when we walk by. This is what it looks like when a lady is winning all the games. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is when I really miss the TV. We did not bring a TV with us this time because we spend most of our time out filming and editing and driving. We get a little break and we start playing a game. And when I'm losing, I want to watch some TV. <laughs> no, but I do like to have like the sound of a movie or something on in the background when we're playing a game. I don't know why. It's just kind of uh, comforting or something. And if you notice, it's very quiet in here. We do not have to have the air on tonight. It is 67 tonight here in, where the heck are we again? Wakini. <laughs> Wakini, Kansas. It's been a hundred degrees up until about 10 o'clock every night for the past five nights. And tonight it is 67. All right, check this out, guys. I was out here taking the car off of the tow dolly here. We're getting ready to go out for the day. This is what the water supply looks like at each of the sites. And I looked over here and saw this geyser happening over here. Apparently somebody was pulling through that site and hit the thing, knocked off the top. Now the water's just shooting out. Pretty crazy. So for a change, we're getting gas in the car. 
this time. 3.39 a gallon at this gas station. It's called 24-7 Travel Store. I've never heard of this one before, but there's a McDonald's on there in case you want a Big Mac. And I don't know if you guys can see this on film, but look just how dirty this car is from being towed and just catching all the dirt off the road as we drive. Yeah, you can especially see it on the hood here. Look at that, how crazy. 3762 to fill up this monster. That's a nice change for once. All right, so this is hilarious. We are out here running around in a little town called Hayes in Kansas, about a half an hour from our park. And we're just kind of looking to see what's out here anyway. And we see this Goodwill, so we're like, all right, let's go to the Goodwill. We pull in. It turns out they don't open um, for another, like, 15 minutes or something. But you see how the entire parking lot is empty. You see where that red van is. We pulled in and we parked right there. Go to open the door, and somebody pulls in right beside us. I mean, literally right to the right of that van. Mm -hmm. That's where we were sitting. We both realize at the same time the store is not open yet, so we all jump in our car. The, the person who pulled in beside us did acknowledge. They did say, yeah, I'm that person. The entire parking lot's empty and I park right beside you. So that was kind of funny. Um, but at, they pull out and they drive away. We're trying to pull out and the woman in the red van, um, some old lady who probably belongs in the accessible parking right beside it, she pulled up behind us and then backed up to let us get out so that she could pull into the spot we were in. What the heck, man, I can't make this stuff up. <laughs> so I really do want a TV in the RV and I was looking at these. This is the smallest one they have right here. It's a 24 inch Vizio. That would fit right above the door and it has the apps on it. You connect to the internet so we could stream uh, whatever we wanna watch. If we wanna watch a movie while we're playing games or something. And I got this little mount that will make it easy to um, hook the TV up when we want it and take it down when we don't. I do hate to buy another TV, but it is under 100 bucks for both those things and we're gonna be in the RV for a month, so. And there it is, guys. We got the little TV that I was showing you in the store. We got it set up right above the door in the perfect position. We can sit right over here, play games, eat our dinner, do whatever we want to do, kick back, watch a movie. We got Point Break on there right now just to see that the thing works. It's in the perfect place where it doesn't take up any other room inside the RV, and we can see it perfectly right here, sitting on the couch. So it's the next morning. We are getting ready to roll out to Colorado. We are so excited, and um, yeah, we've been kind of not really downsizing in here, but um, finding places for everything that we brought with us. Because you've probably seen in the background where we had a bunch of stuff sitting here, we had a bunch of stuff sitting over here, and we do still have a few things here, but this is the stuff that we set here every time when we're gonna roll out. But this is why I wanted to get just a little TV here, and this is exactly what I was talking about. These strings right here, you just pull these, and they disconnect behind the TV. And then you can just lift the TV right off of there to travel. That way we don't have it just bouncing around up here while we're trying to drive. And this part here stays when we're ready to hook it up, stick it right back up there. I'm almost afraid to say it, but it seems like this episode is going very, very smoothly and there's not anything major happened. In fact, I've even got the headlights going. <laughs> I bought two new bulbs for those uh, yesterday when we were at Walmart as well. And as you've already seen, we got the lights on the tow dolly working. There's a pin that goes in here to hold these up off the ground when the car is on it. This thing right here. And I almost drove off without it yesterday from the other park. So amazingly, I was able to find these at Walmart and I bought an extra one just in case. But with that in mind, it appears that our trip is starting to come together here. I'm thinking that everything that gave us trouble in the beginning, we have been able to wrangle together and get fixed up. It generally does take about three to four days to really get into a trip. Wow, look at that sun coming up. But yeah, I think we are pretty much there um, physically and mentally getting things, like I said, wrangled together. 
and getting things in order so our trip will start going a lot more smooth. And it really does take those few days to kind of detach from home because you're so used to being at home and the comforts of home that moving into the RV, even though it's a fun experience, it still is a big change. And when you're going on a road for a month, you know, there's a lot of things you're trying to remember, a lot of things you're trying to pack up. You've got lists upon lists upon lists of things that you need to remember and bring with you and medications and toiletries and trips to Walmart just to make sure you've got everything. But after a couple days, you get in the groove and you are good to go. And with that being said, it is time to go to Colorado. While we're getting things ready to go here, I'll show you a couple other things that we did. Put our internet down there and out of the way. So we're always looking for ways to simplify and make things easier. We stopped at the Dollar Tree and we got these couple of little baskets. One for up there, one for trash that we kind of just bounce around here. Because when you're driving, you just need that. I need a place to put my wallet and whatever else in there because otherwise sitting on here, it bounces around, ends up under my feet. And the other thing that I did that I've been wanting to do for a little while was I updated the GPS. So it should be completely updated with new maps and everything now. And I moved it from down here to up here. So even though it's pointing up a little bit higher than I really wish it were, it still will be much better than over here because over here, it kept like falling down like this. Every time I hit a bump, it falls down. And the other thing was that it was blocking this vent right here. So when I had the air on, I couldn't feel any air from that vent whatsoever. So now it's up here in a much better place. All I have to do is touch it and change the destination of where we're going and we are good to go.